Okay, so here's the deal guys. We are checking out the Trek Powerfly series again. I started this series about a month ago with no new updates essentially to report from to try and clarify the whole situation. And in doing so, Trek decided to make it more confusing by releasing new models. It's hard to know exactly what this series is today right here right now we're going to talk about the trek powerfly series in a whole we're just going to skip through it i did the hard tails and then i was going to do the full suspensions and then i was going to do all the in-betweens but there's just so many of them in europe in north america and everything so we're just going to go over the basic ones which everyone has and we're going to share what it is so i'm going to pull them up on the computer here to just keep a refresher I've got the microphone up close, so hopefully it is just crispy audio. So the Powerfly series has been and is still Trek's essentially best-selling mountain bike, electric bike. Overall, it's the Marlin of the Powerflies. It comes in two main models. One is a hardtail and the other is a full suspension. Now these full suspension models are not your typical full suspension bikes. They are designed specifically for comfort. So that rear end is rotated around a little bit. So normally with a full suspension bike, you would have a shock in front of the seat tube. In this instance, it's behind it. That allows it to be directly below you. So you're able to get that actual comfort from impact more than the performance gains of braking control and, and wheel on ground contact from a full suspension. You will still get those, but the comfort will be significantly better, whereas the performance will be not as significantly noticeable. With all the Trek Powerfly series in North America and Europe now, they are coming with a couple different options, either a 500 watt or a 625 watt battery. This is gonna get you a good amount of range. Generally, on the bigger mountain bike style ones from the Powerfly series, you get a bigger battery, and the more entry level ones, you get a smaller one. If you're gonna adventure more, you wanna buy a better bike, you'll probably want the bigger, better battery. They all have the same performance CX motor. So this comes with up to 85 Newton meters of torque. And with the new Bosch smart system, you're actually able to control that via an app on your smartphone. This app is pretty user-friendly. It's got a nice bold look to it. You can easily control your kind of power curve to it. So how aggressive each mode is all off your own phone, whereas previous generations, you were unable to do that. It was possible, but only through a dealer, and it definitely wasn't the best interface to kind of customize. We could definitely do it for you, but it, it definitely wasn't the best. As usual, these are e-bicycles, so they only go up to 32K an hour. Pretty much everyone has agreed that 32K an hour is a bicycle, and it's gonna work just fine on anywhere where bicycles are allowed check with your local areas, blah, 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 because everyone's different. But generally speaking, bike paths and things like that, if it's pedal assist and max of 32 kilometers an hour, it is a bicycle. On average, we hear people getting around 50 to 70 kilometers on a good, depending what battery you have, on a good ride usage, just riding, boost mode, normal mode, eco mode, bouncing around, you're getting around 70 kilometers, 50 if you're really heavy on the hills or something like that. But overall, a pretty impressive amount. You're normally bored of biking before you're running out of battery, and that is something I've been told by many people. As we look at the new smart system from Bosch, it sounds a lot smarter than it is. Essentially, it adds Bluetooth and allows you to control the bike with that. That's honestly about as smart as it gets. There's not much more to it. What it does do is add a few other little features which aren't really smart, but kind of intelligent in some ways. The controller now is definitely nicer, so it's a little smaller, it's off to the side, and all of them have the same with just a, a controller switch to go through the app on the phone, and then you simple up and down or cycle through options menu. The displays are much cleaner, crisper, they're all a little higher quality, but overall, they work well. So I've pulled all three of the new ones up, the Powerfly, for the Powerfly FS4 and the Powerfly FS9. They keep the same names, and again, in Europe, there's a few additional models, but pretty much everyone has these three key role ones which Trek is bringing out. The Powerfly FS4 has seen little to no changes. 
Its weight changed a little bit, but otherwise it comes with a reasonable hydraulic disc brake, SR Suntour front suspension with lockout, and a 1x10 drivetrain from Shimano. All these features, if you're looking for a nice entry-level bike, and it's not really entry-level, like this is still a higher-end setup, everything on it works well, everything is designed to be easy to use and clean looking with that one by 10 drivetrain. You get enough gears to make your way up most hills, but again, you've got the battery to back up and the motor to back up, so you're gonna make it up any of them. The real only change with this one is the smart system and that one gives you the new controller and the new console, which is easily hot swappable. It is just an improvement in general. It is much cleaner, it looks better, and it operates a little user friendlier. Overall, I like this upgrade. Shockingly enough, you may have seen that the Powerfly 4s are now on sale, the old gen. The new gen ones actually reduced in price. So these ones are around 4,500 Canadian compared to 4,750, which they ended up on on the previous gen, but now they're on sale for 3,800 Canadian. It's complicated. What you need to know is the new ones are better in a very small way, just in the user operating along the electric side. Otherwise, the bikes are identical. You're gonna get a good hardtail mountain bike, which can go anywhere, do anywhere, 500 watt battery in North America, and this is all you need. It will get you going. We move on to the Powerfly FS4, and it's that same little story. Pretty much everything is the exact same. They also reduced the price slightly. So this one used to be 6150 Canadian, now it is $5,500, which is a shocking decrease in price. So the FS4 is the exact same as the Powerfly 4. Shimano Dior 1x10 drivetrain, works well. Just shift super nice, shift down with your thumb, shift up with your index finger, and you can actually push with your thumb as well for up. So it works really well. This one includes a dropper post, which is a really nice addition, even if you get the four, hardtail version, I would recommend looking into a drop post. It makes riding a mountain bike significantly easier. The smart system again is the next big upgrade where it will just operate better for you. So why would you upgrade from the Powerfly 4 to the FS4? Pure comfort. You will get a performance basis to it. The comfort is gonna be huge. Just adding that rear shock in that specific back mounted position is gonna add an insane amount of comfort. It will help you control the bike better downhills in technical areas as well, but it's just gonna be so much more comfier than the hardtail, it's unbelievable. Add in the dropper post and the mountain bike side of things, the off-road side of things becomes easier and easier. As well, it actually is easier to get on and off with that dropper post. So though $325 for a dropper post sounds expensive just to get on and off easier, if you can get on and off your bike easier, you will enjoy it more, and that's a fact. And with these full suspensions and these mountain bikes, you can't have no top bar at all. It needs some strength from rigidity. It can't be twisting and torsionally around. So you can't get super low step, which some people are looking for. This dropper post makes it much easier to swing your leg over, and I think you'll truly appreciate it. Moving on to the final and most upgraded model of all, the Powerfly FS9. If you've seen the Powerfly 4, you like it, it will work great for you. The Powerfly FS4 will work even better for you, it will be even easier to ride off-road and with the features it offers. Now the FS9, why would you jump up so significantly? This one is the only one which has increased in price and it went up to 81.50. A very small price increase from the 78.50 Canadian that it was. So it's a very small price increase, for the fact that it now has GX axis electronic shifting. If you're in the mountain bike world, you know exactly what this is. This is one of the most sought after electronic drivetrain sets you can get. It is extremely reliable. It shifts so fast and responsive. If you click a button on a mouse, that's as fast as a shift does. That's as satisfying as it is up at the handlebar. It's wireless, so the little module on the handlebar actually is just powered by a CR2032. 3032 battery, and that lasts approximately a year to two years. Cheap to replace, it's not a big concern, honestly. In there, then it connects wirelessly via an encrypted Wi-Fi network to the derailleur, and it's just so fantastic, it's great. Now that is a teeny, teeny little downside. I've never really had anyone run out of battery, 
but their always main comment was, well, if I run out of battery, I can still bike home. Yeah, you can. But now if you run out of battery, you won't be able to shift. So you can still bike home, but you're now a single speed in whatever gear you were last in. Could be concerning to some people, to be honest. Again, I've never had anyone come to me and be like, I'm running out of battery all the time. I need a new battery. I need a bigger one. This one as well has a 625 stock with it, with all options. So you are getting a bigger battery, but it is something to consider. The braking also changed to a SRAM. I assume to match the part spec, it doesn't really make that much difference. Last year was the Shimano XT drivetrain with the Shimano XT brakes. These ones are a very powerful SRAM G series. It has no concern really. For the people who are buying this bike, trust me, these brakes are gonna do you just fine. They are extremely overpowered in some ways. They will get you stopped and well controlled down any technical descent or hill you might get into. Or if you're pedaling at quite the pace, you're actually gonna be able to stop yourself very fast with these four piston, high powered hydraulic disc brakes. This model still comes with the full rack and fender systems that they did last year. Similar lighting systems, all of it powered from the battery, which is fantastic. And you just turn it on and everything runs great. You can actually add the fender and rack to both the Powerfly FS4 and the 4 and the light system as well. Although, because it's a bit more technical to plug in than you'd hope, the install can add up a little bit depending on your dealer. All these ones have the removable battery from the side. There's a keyhole on one side, you pop it out, very easy to remove. Hopefully this video helps break it down a little bit for you. You really can't go wrong with any Powerfly option. I genuinely think they're all great bikes. Each one has a small downside, but I think the best valued one where you really can't go wrong with it is the FS4. The downside I'd say to the hardtail version is it's a hardtail and it has no drop boast, but you can add that and that's a small price to pay and you'd still be cheaper than the FS4. But the FS4 comes with one and you get that hugely beneficial rear shock, which will make your riding that much better. Comfort wise and ability wise, it's just easier because of that shock and then you add in that drop post, small amount to pay, you know, you're roughly $700 more just to get those upgrades, that's a good value. That is honestly a good value. The FS9 though is definitely the king of kings. If you want a bike which you buy and just works perfectly in any situation, obviously the people who are watching this, you're not downhill racers. This will not win a downhill race, but it will be the comfiest bike to do almost anything you want it to do. It will shift so reliably, if in doubt, buy the FS9. This is the bike where you will have no issues with it and you will love forever and will never need to do an additional upgrade ever again. Everything about it is exactly what you'd want out of a bike and more. All right, hopefully this helped. Keep an eye out for more videos and uh, we'll see you out there. Thank you.